Faithful Annie, Limping Annie, Annie Get Your Gun, call it what you like. The Afro Anson is a beautiful plane and this FX kit looks pretty good too. Find out more right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. So today is day one of the build of the brand new Avro Anson in 148 scale from Airfix. I feel quite connected to this plane in many ways because I've seen so much of the uh, design stuff. I've been able to chat with the designer. I've seen the pre-builds, I've talked to the guy who does the instructions or guys who did all the research to get the everything looking good and all of the decals so i've got quite high expectations of this kit the the plastic i've seen before is really exquisite and the box opening showed that it is as well so i'll i now now it's time to bite the bullet and actually start making the darn thing if you enjoy it, and I hope you do, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the button below. And if you haven't done so already, I don't know why, but if you haven't done so already, please do remember, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell there and you'll be notified of all future videos. And of course, you can go and have a nose through my back catalogue. And if you'd like to support this or any future builds in a more concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks or indeed through any of my online partner programs. Enough of that, let's get down into building this beautiful aeroplane from the late 1930s, the Avro Anson in 148th from Airfix. I've made a start by painting the uh, cabin floor here and also putting these two aluminium patches. I guess they go under the pilot's feet where the radar bars are. Then there's this strange little assembly that goes in. It comes in two parts, this base and this like big handle stirrupy kind of thing someone I know will know what that is and will tell me anyway it goes in okay next is this um, spar I guess it is panel um, you'll notice on here that I have already it's been painted green and I've also picked out this in black and applied a decal that goes there I guess it's like a navigation set of nav instrument repeats because it looks like a compass at that end anyway let's go on there and then this piece fits onto the floor like so next thing to make is this seat i'm going to hazard a guess it's the pilot's seat from where it goes so two halves um just sort of hooked together like that and then there's a cushion that sits in there and I'll just glue all that together and then there's this other uh, chair which I suspect or seat I should say which I suspect is for the instructor this being a training aircraft There we go. There we go. All right, so now I have made all the chairs according to the instructions and I'll put them into the floor. So this one, I'm assuming is the pilot seat here. Okay, it goes in there. There you go. So try and be delicate with these things. It really isn't much point, but trying to be delicate sometimes. The co pilot come instructor seat is next. It's 
ne? Then the navigator, I believe. This is the navigator seat. Or trainee navigator, anyway. We're there. And the wireless operator and air gunner. WAPAG. Goes at the back here. There we go. All the seats are in. Now I know I upset some people last time by weathering the outside of the aircraft but not the inside or the inside but not all of the inside. Anyway, what I'm going to do this time is just dry brush a little bit of aluminium. Especially around the seating areas where they get scuffed up but also you know, where the um, where the crew actually uh, walks around. Maybe on these little bits as well. Just to add, add a little bit of wear and tear and all that. I'm also going to put a bit of uh, grime on eventually. A bit of, um, uh, bit of uh, mucky, dusty, oily stuff. Just so you know, the, the cabin looks a bit worn. Because you know, the pilots came out this way to get it in and out. So... Eventually, they're going to wear it down, I guess. There we go, that's probably enough. Now, the researcher Luke and the designers, Matt and I believe Jonathan, have really gone to town on the interior decals here. So, there's some little decals here. Now, normally, normally I would be saying to you you know what what are you bothering with these for but the Anson does have so much glass or plastic so much um, transparency around it that you actually might see these so it's not just them being you know real completionists and you know it was there you will probably be able to see these I don't know what they are I think they're uh, boxes for flares or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what these are. But they have these little yellowy decals on. And I think they need to go on. Okay, wondering, you know, worrying about which way round these goes is probably a bit more a me problem than a them problem. But, you know, this is a training station. <clears throat> and I suspect the attitude was, well, you know, you're in the Royal Air Force now, chaps, may as well get it right as you're training. Um, get the alignments all nicely done. And so they would. On an operational squadron, they probably wouldn't care. They just chuck stuff in there and they know what it is, where it is. But who knows? Anyway, they're done. Um, it's actually looking nice. Right. And the next thing that goes in is this main spa. That fits in very nicely. Now at this end, at the sharp end as it were, we can put the pilot's control column in. Now this being a training aircraft, you can have another control column here for the instructor, but instead we're going to blank this off. My thought is that uh, by the time this aircraft routes a trials unit, this is um, the Australian one, is a camouflage trials unit, remember. Pretty much hope that the chap in, in the left hand seat here knows what he's up to already, so we don't really need to be dual control. That's my thought, anyway. Next, we're going to put in this um, side structure, the actual sort of um, space frame these days. We call it space frame these days, no doubt tubular steel construction that was the sort of the backbone of the aircraft really it's there's a, a small point here that needs to go in it hooks over the spar here it hooks over the spar here and then at this end there's a, a tab that goes on the underside of the cockpit so just take your time and line all those up 
and in tribute to the designers and possibly the uh, test shots and all the rebuilds and da 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 but anyway I like to think they got this right first time so that pins in that's hooked over there that's hooked over there that's tucked under there and it all went in in like 20 seconds now they do provide I, I think this is my favorite part of the entire kit I mean they, they spent ages designing this kit and getting all the engineering done which is fantastic but I'm sorry guys but this is my favorite bit there's a copy of the pilot's notes as a, a decal a transfer the front page of the pilot's notes now every type of aircraft in the RAF would have pilot's notes for it it tells you how fast you can go in all sorts of conditions it's takeoff run and all the weights it's like the technical handbook for the aircraft called the pilot's notes this being a training aircraft of course you'd have the pilot's notes in it so what I've done is I've got the decal and I've put it onto just a strip of card because I want to sort of make it look a bit bulkier than just a, a decal on the desk so I'll cut around here I'll try and just color this edge like the spine a bit maybe, maybe with this interior green or something like it just so that then these edges will show white so it will look like an actual book um, and I might actually just put a tiny little bit of shading around there so it emphasizes the 3D nature of it. But I'll let that dry and then I'll put that on. I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. So there we have our copy of the pilot's notes. I um, hope you can see it. It's got like a properly cast a shadow which a, um, a decal just stuck on here won't. You can see the edges here that are exposed are white. And the spine, I've just given a little bit of colour to, to make it look like... So I might just give a tiny little bit of a, a wash around the bottom here to um, make it stand out that little bit more. But I'm really happy with that. Pilot's Notes, an inspired piece of detailing from Airfix. I'll just a quick recap on the um, weathering and muckying about I've been doing uh, on the inside here. Yeah, it starts off with this interior green, and I gave it some scuffing around with um, aluminium to my bits that have been, you know, just worn down. And then I've also sort of spotted in some powder, some dark earth, and some sand, just to give it a like a grubby look. You know, you know this is a plane that's, you know, not far short of the pilot getting the uh, mechanic and say, "Hello, Chiefy, say what?" Um, could you get one of your chaps to give the old kite a sweep out? Looking a bit grim, don't you know? Good fellow, carry on. Um, but it ain't happened yet, so um, it's quite grubby on the inside. It's a trials aircraft. It's going to be heavily used. It's going to be a bit of a hack. They're going to be pushing this plane day in, day out, doing their trials on camouflage and whatever. So I don't imagine it's going to be that clean on the inside. But that's my impression anyway. I'm sure someone who has had access to one of these in the past will be horrified that it's this dirty. But, ah, do you know what? I think it's fine. It was wartime. What do you want to do? Anyway, there we go. That's what I've done. Oh, the other thing, of course, is where the spars are, people hop over the spars. So don't forget, if you're going to do this, don't forget to dirty up the top of the spars as well because I need to climb over those to get to the position. The door is about here somewhere I believe I seem to remember the film of people climbing in over the trading edge here hopping up onto the top of the trading edge and then climbing into their various stations so all, the, all along the way there's going to be people traipsing backs and forwards and muckying up the place and so there it is uh, with the piece stuck in the office the desk sits up against this edge here and also sort of hooks into the top of the bar here and under this junction so it's really nice and secure but I'm I'm really 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 happy with those pilots notes so here are the decals on the instrument panel and do you know what I'm not all that impressed I mean these two here are supposed to be on raised up bits of instrument and then there's a massive great big flat area of nothing then there's more instruments one of which is raised up 
some of which have got bezels. Um, it's a lot of decal fix and decal solution. Um, I'm sure they could have arranged this in a better way. I mean, these, these two here could have probably have been an, separate decals, as could these. They would have sat better than the main instrument panel could have sat there. This whole big space here is just a space of nothing between two high points. Um, really, really not very good, I'm afraid. I don't know why they did it this way. You see, if you look at the um, the decals in the cabin that we did, you can see there's three small yellow decals here. They're no bigger than a lot of these instruments. They could have come as separate decals. The ones that are supposed to sit right up high like those could have come separately and then the rest of them here could have just come as one sheet. Um, I, I, that's not great planning, I'm afraid. Similarly, the radio decals, um, there's a huge, great big lump in the middle of these and these buttons and things. They really, really don't suit decals at all well. It would have been a lot better, frankly, it would have been a lot better just to have flat faces and put the decals on as they are. Um, I know there's a, a Kitsworld aftermarket set. There's going to be other aftermarket sets as well. To be honest, I think it's probably best to uh, shave these down, flat, file them flat and get a set from aftermarket and that will then look decent. Anyway, when the radio set is all done, there's a peg on the side that goes in the hole on this frame and then there's a support the bottom that goes into the main spa and then that's your radio set fixed in now with the uh control console in the middle it sort of hooks underneath the rudder bars and then this this little flag shaped thing has to go the other side of the instrument panel it's all a bit for squeeze but when it goes, it goes really easily, but to, to arrange it to go in the first place can be a little bit tricky. But it does go there eventually. I promise you, just be a bit more careful than I am, and it will go. See, there we are. That's it. Fits in nicely. Fits into that slot, and it all connects up nicely at the side. That can then go in. And to fit the... I think there's a, a round peg and a rectangular peg. There's a round hole and a rectangular hole. Fantastic. Couldn't be simpler. It does go in quite nicely. And then there's also um, on the side, on the space frame over here, there's a support which supports the uh, the rudder bars. Um, there's another one over the other side as well. So that, that needs to go in. And then that's the control panel sitting in place. Now, on the other side of the fuselage, on the frame on the other side, there, if you're doing scheme A, which is the Messerschmitt killer, then there is a machine gun that needs to go in there, a Vickers gun needs to go in, and the support has sort of sloping uh, slots for it to fit on onto. Uh, just get, the, get it in place. It's roughly parallel with the upper frame and then just glue it in place also what i've done is i've painted the gun in black they suggested but then i have given it a dry brush with aluminium just to bring up the edges and it's quite a high contrast so that you can see it from the outside and then the other half of the fuselage framing can go in. It's the same as the first half. There's a pin at the back, two slots over the spars in the middle. And at the front, there's the connection for the rudder, the support for the rudder bar that are right over there. That goes in place. And you know what? It all slots together remarkably well. 
Then the top piece can go in. Now this is going to be a bit tricky because there's a lot to fit together. First it slots in together at the front but it also supports the post of the navigator's desk. Then it sits over the frame in the middle but then there's the radio operator's desk. That's got a post and that needs to fit, fit in as well. So it, it takes a bit of fiddling around and lifting and pushing and pulling and all the rest of it to get in. Then at the back there's uh, two holes for the cross beam to go in. And you should end up with the tail of the top piece meeting up with the two tails of the bottom pieces. But that if if this if you leave it overnight like I did, then this um, bar in the middle might be a bit of an issue to get back in place. But once it's all there, it all sits nicely and that is a very good looking space frame. And at the back, there's a, um, a well, I was going to say a rear bulkhead. I don't think it's much of a bulkhead. I don't know how structural. I suppose it's structural. could be a bulkhead. Anyway, that's been painted up. There's a lot of painting and there's a decal to go on. It slots into the floor like this. And then the space frame needs to sit into it as well. And it's a really, really fiddly thing to get to. But hopefully you can now see that the frames on the top and the side sit in a hole on each side of this rear bulkhead. And it sort of doesn't seem to sit absolutely vertically, which is a bit weird. And it doesn't seem to sit completely back against the uh, tailpiece there. But uh, we'll see how we go. If you're doing scheme A, then you'll need to mount an extra machine gun up here. And you'll need to drill out these two holes in 1.3 mil for the mounting. And then, of course, what we'll do, we'll give that a good old wash with detail wash, with panel wash, and it can go into the side of the fuselage. Fits into the side of the fuselage like this. And then here we have a machine gun. I've put the block in and I'll paint that black in a moment. Then the piece kind of sits on the side of the fuselage. It's a bit of an odd fit, I have to say. It slides over the um, spars. It can't just slide along them. You have to sort of clip them over the spars. But then pieces have to fit underneath the floor as well. It's a bit of a strange fit. So it goes underneath the floor, um, nice and tight, up against the frame all the way round. There are bits that the instructions say to look out for to make sure that you do and you do check with them that you've got everything right. Um, you do need to make sure that the piece sits on top of this part here. And you need to make sure that these walls are properly cinched in against the um against the bit on the spar there you can see so a bit of glue in there and that will help that out now the rear turret fairing there's just three pieces here there's the uh the mounting plate there's a channel for the gun and there's a bulkhead that's painted in a very pretty reddish brown so all of that needs to go into the fuselage now the bulkhead fits up against a, a line on the fuselage and uh, like so and the gun channel probably needs to match up with that slot in the upper fuselage as well and the front of the mounting sits on the bulkhead we did earlier so just make sure all these bits are lined up 
Now I've put in this piece of um, transparency here. Uh, what I really like is that it clips in. So, so it doesn't just sort of sit here waiting for you to mess it up. It actually clips in into place. So I've painted the backs in red, yellow and green and then painted silver on the back as well. Um, and they look fine. I'll mask those off um, for painting later. But I do like the way it. you can see here these little clips that hold it in place. So when the fuselage halves go together, they're going to sit absolutely in the right spot. Right, so I've put in a small window at the front. I've put in the sides here. I've given everything a wash. Then these bits I've painted black and I've given them a white dry brushing to bring out the detail. So it's ready to go in. And then it goes in the same way as before, except this time, of course, you've got to click in all these alignment holes so start from one end is my advice get it roughly in place and start from one end um, and make sure all the bits are going in properly now on the roof we have to drill another hole and the hole is tiny it's right next to this alignment slot for one of the interior panels it's, can you just see this tiny black spot that allegedly is the pilot hole for a 1.3 millimeter drill so we'll drill that out hopefully it will go roughly in the right place um, i'm guessing this is for an aerial or something like that in the future there we go 1.3 mil why they couldn't do that themselves i'm not entirely sure um, make sure that the slot is clean it's up against that top edge of the frame there then it can go on the top now it clips in at the back here over the turret and then it sort of just sits on top of the frame and it meets up at the front end of the frame now what i suggest you do is glue up the back first and get that absolutely set and then when it's good bend the part over the top of the frame and glue it at the front then when everything's done, what you can do is put on the base. Now this slots in the back and oh my goodness, would you look at that fit. Absolutely amazing fit. That's a nice piece of engineering, a nice piece of manufacture. So we'll close up the what gaps there are, tape everything together, glue it up. So that's the plane done. I'll leave it to set up overnight. That went pretty much better than I had hoped, actually. Having seen how complex all the parts are, how many parts there are for the interior, and the fact you've got a space frame and then the outer shell around it as well, I really thought, oh, this is going to be... Even with designers that they have these days and CAD programs, this is going to be a nightmare. But it went together, I mean, spectacularly well. Beautiful detail. The only thing I, I really wish is they'd done better decals for the, um, for the instrument panel and for the radios. But look, if you're going to buy one of these, then really seriously think about getting an aftermarket set. Just shave down the, the faces of where the instrument panels and the radio kit goes, put 3D printed ones on, and they're going to look amazing. Otherwise, they're going to be a, you're going to spend a lot of time getting a yeah, an okay result. Anyway, other than that, everything is looking tickety-boo and hunky-dory. So do please come back for the next part of the build, which will be obviously the wings, engines, and so on and so forth, and get it up to getting it ready to paint. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get all the notifications of future videos. And of course, anything on my channel you see, if you like it, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button. It doesn't cost you anything to do that but it helps me enormously play the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope to see you again very soon. Goodbye.